connected glass on Bedrock Edition? Surely not. Hello humans, I'm the Alien Doctor, but you can call me Alien, and welcome back to another add-on showcase video for Minecraft Bedrock Edition. Obviously this is the series where I showcase Minecraft Bedrock Edition add-ons. I try to find problems with them, I explain how they work, and obviously show you how to use them. Today we're going to be looking at an amazing add-on that adds in connected glass into Minecraft Bedrock Edition. Now this isn't as simple as you might think, this isn't just, you know, install the add-on or the resource pack and then the glass works. There's actually like a little bit of setup required to get this to work. Not a lot, it's just not like a normal resource pack basically. So something I wouldn't normally do but I am going to show you how to do is install this first of all because yeah it's a little bit more complicated than normal. However assuming that you can get it into your game like any other resource pack then uh, yeah you're completely fine. So to download this pack, you're going to need to come over to this MCPDL link that will be in the description, then click on both of these links, because this is a resource pack and a behavior pack, it'll then take you to the download. You obviously then need to open those uh, pack files that they will download, just like any other add-on slash resource pack, and if you're on uh, a mobile device, then you may have to forcefully open it um, in Minecraft. Um, but there are plenty of tutorials on the internet to show you how to do that, so I'm not going to show you how to do it for your specific device. If you're on Windows 10 though, you can just double click and it will load into the game. So once you have got the pack in imported into your game by however you do that on whatever platform you're on, you're obviously going to want to press play. And um, obviously for most resource packs, if you actually go to settings and global resources, you can just apply them in the settings or in the global resources tab. However, this resource pack is also a behavior pack, which means you must apply it to the actual world as well. So just for this, I'm just gonna type in connected glass showcase, there we go, and uh, set the thing to creative. Now, this is a problem. You are going to have to turn off achievements because this is a behavior pack. So if we go down here to the world behavior packs, my packs and then the connected glass behavior pack and add it as you can see here we have to turn off achievements this is just so that you don't get like some cheaty what pack that lets you get all of the achievements and that sort of thing that's why that's there but there are achievement or advancement packs such as this one right here that will um, allow you to actually get unofficial advancements back into the game like Java Edition basically. But yeah, anyway, once you've added the behavior pack, come down to the resource packs and make sure you've added that as well. There we go. Ignore that missing dependi d dependencies. It's just a bug with the pack that should be fixed at some point. I'm not the creator of the pack. Uh, whilst we're here, actually now's a good time to point out the creator of the pack. It is made by someone, and sorry if I'm butchering this, but Habib and wash okay I, i'm probably saying that wrong i'm gonna be honest i don't know i'm not good with names but anyway you can see all his links and stuff are here and you can also see his links or yeah you can see their links in the description as well if you are interested and uh, obviously the download for this pack will be in the description as well but anyway once you've added in both the behavior pack and the resource pack there's actually one more thing you need to do and that's in the game tab make sure that you have where is it the additional modding capabilities, make sure that is checked. Um, you can just press continue on that. And then uh, just to, because, although I believe you only need this one to be ticked, I'm actually gonna turn on all these as well, just in case, you know. Um, and also I'm gonna turn off multiplayer, but it will work with multiplayer. It's just like, I don't want people joining my world when I'm trying to make a video. <laughs> So sometimes it will say on saving world resource packs for a long time, but then eventually it will go into the actual um, normal loading screen and begin loading up the game or the world. Okay, so the world has literally just loaded and you know, you're probably like, oh my gosh, connected glass, give me all the connected glass in the world. So you know, you, you get all the stuff that you need, you get a furnace, you get some sand, and then some fuel, probably wood, but we're gonna get dried kelp. And then you put them in the furnace, then you like wait for it to smelt because you're like, oh my gosh, I can't believe this connected glass, it's so amazing. And then it's finally smelted after you've been waiting for like ages. And then you get the glass and you place it down and you're like, oh my gosh, why is it not connecting? What is happening? Is the pack not working? Why? <laughs> Don't worry, the pack is working fine. This is all completely normal. 
So what you actually have to do to get this glass is in fact get the normal glass that you get from the furnace and put it in the crafting grid. It will then give you this glass. Now you may think this looks like stained glass, however if we open this up you can see here we got the normal glass blocks, we got the stained glass and then we've got the connected glass. So what this pack allows you to do is use normal glass which isn't connected and then optionally turn it into this stuff which is connected, meaning that if you wanted to you know you can obviously use this as connected. So let's just put this glass in here and uh, get it out of there like that, there we go. Now as you can see when we place this down it is in fact connected glass. It's amazing, it's awesome, I love it. It will not connect with the Minecraft default glass as you can see here though and um, but that's not a massive problem to be honest and the same thing goes for stained glass as well so as you can see let's just get some yellow and blue if we put that in the crafting grid we can get connected blue stained glass and connected yellow it doesn't actually have connected in the name I think they should put connected in the name to be honest but anyway um, but yeah as you can see boopity bop I could just you know build my logo <laughs> advertising in my own video, whatever. Now let's say that you don't really like this normal glass texture. Well, um, that's actually fine because there is something you can do about that. So if you press save and quit and then you press the little pencil, go to resource packs and then basically select this resource pack. Notice this cog wheel here. If you press it, you can actually change the glass texture to black bordered glass, old glass, clear glass, and basic glass. I'm gonna leave it on the basic glass because it's per my personal favorite, but yeah, you do have those options as well. Now, the next thing I'm going to talk to you about is how this pack works, but more importantly, the problem with this pack. Now, to I do just want to say though, it is not a problem with the pack creator. The pack creator did an amazing job and an, um, it's actually really amazing what they've done. It's more just a problem with Bedrock Edition in general and the limitations of it as opposed to actual, um, yeah, as opposed to the actual pack creator. The pack creator can't really fix the problems that there are in this pack. So the first one, I don't know, maybe they can fix this one, but this isn't a massive one. If you try and pick block connected glass, it comes up with these... Um, tile items to be honest though when you place them down they're completely normal and that's only when you're in like creative anyway <laughs> like you're not going to be doing that in survival and I imagine most of you will be using this in survival so uh yeah it, that's, it's really not a massive problem to be honest so we can just clear all that however the second pretty massive problem with this pack is that the way it works so inside each of these glass connected glass blocks there is an entity now the creator of the pack has actually created a function command that allows you to show these entities so they're called detectors and what the detector is is just an entity inside of the glass block and what that entity detector thing will do is it will detect whether other glass blocks are being placed next to it. If they are, then the texture will change. It's actually like super smart. So, you know, well done to the back creator to thinking of this. However, if you know anything about entities and uh, more specifically lag, then uh, you may know why this is a problem. And I'm going to demonstrate why this could potentially be a problem for you, but also how to work around it because there are workarounds for the problem with using entities. So don't worry, it's not a massive problem. Well, it is a massive problem unless you don't do the workaround. So just keep watching, basically. So what I'm going to do here is use this little fill command to fill a 100 by 100 grid of this glass. Now you can see here, first of all, it's filling fairly slowly. I think this might be a problem with Bedrock Edition, to be honest. Not actually... Well, I don't know. I don't know if you filled blocks normally, if it would take this long or not. But as you see, either way, it's going pretty slowly. And by the way, I don't have... Just whilst, you know, talking about this lag stuff, I don't have a particularly bad computer, actually. My computer is pretty decent as you can see there okay all of the blocks are filled and it is now going to begin turning it into connected glass now you may have noticed the problem is it is incredibly laggy it's actually not super laggy I have uh, well you can see here it's 10,000 you know blocks and inside each of these blocks there's an entity so you know 
that's going to create quite a lot of lag. A lot of entities in Bedrock Edition creates lag, and that's pretty much the same with Java Edition as well. So if you think about it, all of these glass blocks, even the ones that are connected, still have entities inside them. And I'm sorry if this is frame ratey, it's kind of messing around with the recording because the recording's kind of going to be a bit weird, but also the actual game is a bit frame ratey right now with all of these entities in. You know, these are like 10,000 entities right here. And it's laggy, basically. It's actually not insanely laggy, but it is still laggy. Now, I'm going to wait until all of this is finished connecting so that we can see what the lag is like then. Okay, so I did actually record audio <laughs> for this clip. However, all of the audio basically corrupted for this part of the video because of how laggy it was. So as you can hopefully see on screen now, and I'll also be using some footage I got when I, because this is actually the second attempt of me trying to record this video. So I'll also potentially use footage of my first attempt of trying to record <laughs> this video as well. But you can see here how laggy it is. You can see that not even all of the glass has finished connecting and I turned down my render distance to 16 chunks and it is still just so <laughs> laggy. It's, yeah, really, really bad. And that is a problem with using entities inside of the blocks to, you know, detect when they've been placed next to another glass block because lots of entities in Bedrock Edition and in Java Edition causes lots of lag. And it's, as I say, not really a problem that the map creator can work around. There is a workaround and I will show you that workaround. Do not worry. However, I'm just going to show you a couple more clips of this just being really laggy if there are any good clips because to be honest, most of this is just the screen recording lagging. Like, yeah sure, it was bad in game, but it wasn't as bad as how the screen recording makes it out to be. <laughs> So what I have ended up having to do is actually recreate another world um, that shows this on a much more smaller scale because, let's be honest, that was <laughs> quite a lot of glass and quite a lot of lag and it's probably messed around with the broken recording and stuff. But anyway, let's say that you or your friends or something basically just get on your world, get on your server, whatever, place a bunch of this connected glass and lag it out. And especially if you're on a server where you've got a lot of builders that are using glass, like naturally, even if you're not trying to place a load of glass to create like a lag machine or whatever, you're still just going to get, you know, a lot of lag from people just building with this stuff, you know, just normally like they would normally do. Uh, glass is something fairly common to be used in certain builds and that sort of thing. Uh, oh, okay, you can see here it is actually lagging a bit. Hmm. I might need to restart my PC. Oh, or is it lagging? Or have I just not placed stuff in? I don't really know what's happening, to be honest. Okay, well, that's actually strange. I guess that's a bug with the pack, but it also might just be my PC lagging. I don't actually know if it's <laughs> my PC's fully recovered from what I just put it through. Seems like some weird texture. Anyway, that's not the point. The point is, let's just say that, you know, you're, you're building normally and you just place down a lot of glass for a build. And that's completely fine. And you're not trying to make a lag machine. But obviously, you still have a lot of these um, entities here. You know, like even this is probably going to be impacting my frames a little bit, to be honest. I feel like it is, but it might not be, to be honest. I don't know. But especially if you're on a low-end device, it will be. Now, the dev of the pack was Big Brain and actually has a command that actually removes detectors. So you can see here, all of these detector entities are all there. If we do this command, now they're all gone. Now, what this means is, is that once you've had a... So let's do this again. So let's just create this little 4x4 and do show detectors. You don't actually have to do show detectors first. I'm just going to do that so that you can see them going and that sort of thing and then remove detectors they're now gone what that means is is that if you place new glass next to it well you know they're not going to connect because only only the like new glass has the entities whereas the old one doesn't however the dev was big brain and thought of that as well so if we get ourselves a stick and then simply right click on the glass it will re um, respawn the entity, basically, and, um, well, yeah, 
as you can see, there's the entity. It's the thing that exists. I wonder if over here, actually, with the weird texture bugs that we had over here, do you think, like, oh, we'd we'd have to, like, reshow all these entities, wouldn't we? Hmm, you know what? That is strange. I don't know why that's happening. Where it's going like that. So maybe this pack isn't perfect then, but it's still like the best connected glass I've seen on Bedrock Edition, so <laughs> I don't mind there being a couple of bugs. I would still recommend it. But yeah, as you can see, if you right click or whatever the alternative is for you, you can actually recreate, respawn, resummon, whatever these little detector entities. So let's just say that you have finished building, well, let's just say you're on a server, because on a, if you're on a server, you might not want to give people the permissions to do function commands, because I do believe you actually have to have full, like, command permissions to run function commands, which means that people would also have access to slash game mode C if you have that sort of thing enabled. So, you know, you, if by giving them that sort of pro power, you could be potentially creating, you know, problems with permissions and banning and whatever on your server. So a workaround is, first of all, put a command block at spawn that has a button that simply just has the, f the function command in there to actually remove the detectors. That's obviously one option. However, the other thing I would suggest is let's just resummon in all of these detectors so you can see it happening. The other option is to set a command block to a chain command block and then put the delay to just whatever. I don't actually know how many ticks is in a second. So we're just going to do 999999, whatever. That was probably too many nines, but whatever. And then always active. Now every however many ticks this is, for just the example, let's just do one tick. Or like 10 ticks maybe. Yeah, let's do that. So now every 10 ticks, what's going to happen is this, oh, that's chain. Repeat is what I meant to do. Now what's going to happen is every 10 ticks, as you can see in the chat, it is going to do the function command to actually remove the detectors. And wow, that happened. Now the only problem with this is, is that you've got to right click it like every so often, every time it runs the command. So I guess you could make the command a little longer, like maybe 20. Yeah, this doesn't seem too bad actually doing 20. Oh, actually no. I guess... Hmm. Oh, okay. The other thing is, is when you destroy glass that doesn't have the detector in, it is kind of this sort of weird, like, half thing. But whatever, that's to the point. But yeah. Basically, just, you guys are probably smarter than me and can come up with an even better way of using the command block with the function command to actually, you know, make this work properly. Um... But yeah, this is overall a really good pack, and I would strongly recommend most of its flaws are caused by Bedrock Edition and not the creator being, like, you know, not big brain or whatever. Like, the creator was very big brain to think of doing it this way, and as far as I'm aware, the creator is also the only person to have ever have done this on Bedrock, and uh, that's pretty cool if you ask me. Okay, just a little side note, you can actually summon the detectors but it actually summons the glass. So I guess maybe these glass box are... And I don't... That's strange. Oh, okay. Found some weird things out with this, with this thing. With this... Okay, that was weird. <laughs> okay, so I'm af actually recording this after I finished recording the video because I realized I forgot to check something. But what happens if you get a silk touch pickaxe and mine one of these pieces of glass. So first of all, we are going to do it with the connected glass. So as you can see here, this is glass that is connected. We'll go into game mode S and then mine that. Now it will give you the weird tile glass, but when you place it, it fixes itself. And then if you just mine it normally, then, oh wow, okay, so it will still give you tile glass. Okay, so I guess there are some problems with the silk touch and mining it. But to be honest, it's not a massive problem, other than the fact that they don't stack with each, with each other. What happens if we do the command that removes the detectors? So now let's try mining it. 
Okay, yeah, so the same thing basically happens. And just out of interest, what happens if we place this down? And what on earth is happening here? So yeah, let's say we place down this connected glass and then do the function command that shows the detectors. What happens when we mine it? Okay, so the detectors do actually disappear. Okay, that's that's cool. Yeah, that's all I wanted to check with regarding Silk Touch. I guess that's really the only problem with this pack that I can think of. Um, I don't really think it's a massive problem though, because it works when you place it down. It's more just the item inside the inventory. And, you know, if the add-on creator sees this video, then they might even think of a way to fix that problem. Something else I've just noticed, I'm not losing any durability, I've just mined a bunch of this stuff for no particular reason. And, um, yeah, I'm kind of not losing any durability. Mm, not fully sure why that is. <laughs> but yeah, look, you can see I've mined loads of this stuff, still got full durability. Maybe it's just because it's a, uh, a, a netherite one, netherite pickaxe. But let's say, what happens if we were to summon just normal glass? I actually have to do the position, don't I? Oh no, it's Phil anyway. Go away, stupid spider, get out of here. Oh, well now, oh my gosh. Okay, so I've got myself a bunch of just normal glass and now let's go back into the game mode survival. Okay, so you do actually lose durability mining normal glass, but you do not mining the uh, connected glass. As you can see, I've just got a bunch of this in my inventory. So I guess that is kind of a problem with this pack, and there is a spider over there. Go away. You're you're the worst mob in the game. Get out of here. Shoot. Die. You, have, you serve, like, well, actually, you do kind of serve a purpose, but still, you're annoying. <laughs> so, well, yeah, that make sure to go and check out creator and download this pack if you are interested um, in you know using it and having connected glass in your world this is honestly just so amazing I really really do like this yeah it's it's cool but anyway that is going to do it for today's add-on showcase video if you are interested in Minecraft Bedrock Edition behavior packs and resource packs then I'd recommend you check out other videos in this series. Admittedly, I've only made one other add-on showcase video so far because, well, I've only just started this series. However, I will be making many more like this very soon. As well as that, I also do Minecraft Bedrock Edition Redstone and technical things like that. So if you are interested in Bedrock Edition in general, then maybe check out my channel. But anyway, that's it from me. Feel free to subscribe and join the Alien Empire. I'll see you hopefully in another video soon. Bye!